Hello and welcome to yet another episode in a series of tutorials explaining the LeaseWeb private cloud based on CloudStack solution. Uh, my name is Rogier Wildkan, I'm the product owner, which means that I help the developers in uh, uh, enhancing our product and building new features. Uh, we already managed or dealt with most of the or a lot of the uh, instance related actions. Uh, or building your infrastructure for instances. Uh, today I would like to zoom in on uh, a function uh, related to isolated networks. Well, before I dive into that, uh, I think it might be useful to explain the way we set up our product. Uh, CloudStack works with network offerings and we, uh, within the private CloudStack uh, product, provide two types of network infrastructure or network offerings. Uh, the first network offering is a shared network offering, uh, which means that uh, every instance uh, which has a network interface within the shared network offering gets a public IP address directly assigned to the virtual NIC. The other network offering we provide within CloudStack Private Cloud is an isolated network offering. Well, this is a, a, a different uh, network offering altogether. Uh, it enables more features and more functionality through a virtual router. Uh, every instance which has a virtual NIC in an isolated network offering uh, has a connection to a virtual router device. Uh, this virtual router device gets a uh, public IP address on its outside, but internally it communicates through private IP space. So if I were to uh, look at the interface of a uh, virtual NIC within an isolated network offering, I would see a private network IP, like 192.168 something something or 10.0 something something, uh, well, RFC 1918. Uh, the virtual router device provides a lot of functionality because uh, it can do multiple things. What I would like to do today is create a load balance rule for uh, an isolated network offering. Well, of course, uh, I would first have to have an instance, so let's start with creating that. Uh, let's just pick a default one. And this has been explained in a previous tutorial. At network interface, what we see here is that uh, by default, because I only have one network offering uh, right now, and this is the pre-configured shared network offering that LeaseWeb provided me with. Uh, also, I cannot change or alter this. The shared network offerings are uh, uh, configured by LeaseWeb itself. But, however, I can create a new network, an isolated network offering, uh, which I can create on the fly. I have to give it the name, uh, and I can make this the default default network for this machine to use. I do not want to have a direct attached network offering for this machine, so I just disable or deselect that. Okay. No, I do not need this. Let's create this machine with a virtual NIC within an isolated network. Well, while this is creating, uh, let's have a look see at... Oh, it's already there. Here we see the public or shared network offering and we see the new network offering which has been created because I created it through creating an instance. Uh, I could also start from here and just create an, an additional isolated network uh, which will then be an option within the configurator of an instance but I chose to go about it the other way. Well, this isolated network offering. Let's zoom in a little. Uh, as you can see uh, there are other and more functionalities here than you would find for a shared network offering. Actually, a shared network offering just, if I were to have clicked that, which I will do here, uh, it just provides me with information. Uh, the shared network offering has a gateway, it has a range assigned to it, and when I create instances within this network offering, uh, they get an IP address picked from that range. Immediately when you dive into the uh, isolated network offering, you see differences. Uh, I can do stuff like restart network or, uh, well, edit is the same. I can delete it. Uh, you cannot delete a shared network offering because we created it. I have egress rules. So that means I have a firewall at my disposal. Oh, interesting. So where do I find this functionality apart from the egress rules? Well, uh, you dive into here. What we see here is the source not IP address of the virtual router. Uh, the virtual router has public internet connectivity and the uh, instance I just created just has access through this IP address 
or can be reached through this IP address uh, on the virtual router. So if I click on that, I get to see even more details. Well, I get to see the IP address, the, ver the, the source node IP address on the outside of the virtual router, different types of information. I could enable a VPN, a Road Warrior VPN, into this uh, network. Or I can start to configure things like this. As you can see, the virtual router uh, device um, leverages, oh, there's the instance password, leverages uh, several functionalities, uh, firewall functionality. I can uh, define IP addresses uh, for inward connections. I can open up the firewall or uh, not if I uh, were to choose so. I can port forward certain specific ports on the outside source not IP address to an internal VM, but that's not what I wanted to show you today. Today I would like to show you the load balance functionality. Let's go there. The load balancer is provided through uh, the virtual router device. Uh, the virtual router is actually nothing else than a virtual machine, so it's a software solution. Uh, it uses HA proxy to uh, load balance traffic on the source net IP address uh, to the internal instances within my isolated network offering. Well, what I'm going to try to do, or I hope to succeed, is create a port 80 web traffic uh, load balance rule and configure it for use with one instance right now because I only configured one. Uh, so what I do is I give it a name, I define the public port, I map it to an internal port, uh, I have to choose a algorithm by which traffic is uh, diverted amongst the instances associated to the load balance rule. Well, what I could do is uh, round robin. Round robin means that it just goes through them uh, one by one. So one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Uh, or least connections, which is more intelligent. It actually looks at uh, how many connections are established to a certain uh, instance. It finds the instance with the least connections and then diverts traffic towards that or source, which means that once a connection is made, uh, it will automatically always be routed towards that instance, as in, uh, I hit the load balancer, uh, the load balancer chooses a machine for me, I get a connection, uh, and it stays upon that certain or specific uh, instance. This is uh, a nice necessity for uh, certain configurations. Well, I'm going to choose round robin. Uh, stickiness. There are multiple ways uh, for me to configure stickiness. Stickiness means that uh, ses session persistence. For some specific uh, reasons, it might be useful to, for a connection to always end up on the same machine. Uh, you can do that by uh, source-based, app cookie, or load balancer cookie. Uh, I'm not going to configure any of these, but uh, in the online KB article about our product, there's more explanation about what all these parameters mean. Uh, load balance cookie. Multiple options. Too much to handle in this video. Uh, so I'm not going to configure stickiness right now. Health check is a functionality which for now is dependent on a specific piece of hardware which is not in our platform. Uh, but in a future version of CloudSec it will be software uh, based uh, and that's when this will become relevant for our platform. But again a web load balancer rule, port 80 to port 80, round robin. Now I just have to decide which VMs I want to associate to this rule. Well, as you might even remember, I just created one instance, so there's only one selection possible for me. Apply. A load balance rule being created as we speak. There it is. Well, after it is created, I have the possibility to add other instances. So if I were to create a new one, uh, new instance, I would be able to associate it to the rule here as well. Uh, I can edit or delete or give it a tag or reconfigure. Now, if I click here, I can see which instances are associated to the rule right now. And I could opt to delete. Uh, uh, a specific instance from the load balance configuration. So, uh, this is the uh, basic uh, software-based load balancer configuration that CloudSec provides and we provide through our platform. I hope you found this tutorial to be uh, helpful and I hope to see you next time for another episode of our Leaseup tutorials regarding private cloud. 
Thanks.